Hey, my name is Addie and welcome to The Pulse. Be sure to subscribe, like, and leave a comment below letting us know what you'd like to see next. Hello, everyone. This is The Pulse, powered by Sennheiser. I'm Tracy Broussard, drummer with Blake Shelton. We have Keo Stroud, drummer with Big and Rich, and David Black, drummer with Phil Vassar. Wink. So, uh, it's been quite a year, hasn't it? Indeed. Yes. What have we all done? Nothing. <laughs> <laughs> Has it been one of those years where we're like, hey, you know what? Let's uh, dig deep into our souls and uh, see. I've continued to play, um, except for the spring of last year and or in 2020, you were, where everybody got shut down for about two months, two to three months. And then uh, where we live, Nashville, Tennessee, um, then it opened back up for a, a stutter step. Yeah, and then they closed it back down until the fall. So I played some of that club scene uh, periodically when it's been available to me over the past year. Which brings me to this, by the way, you told me this because you've started playing down there on Lower Broadmoor. Yeah, and I found it interesting. You said I'm more inspired now than I've been in ten years. Amen. I'm going to venture to say fifteen. I mean, expound upon that. What do you mean? So. When you're with an artist, you're playing the same stuff. Yeah. And it has to be as close to perfect as possible. Mm -hmm. There's no improv. That's not... Now, Keo, you have the unique opportunity to be with a group that there's a lot of improv. Lots of improv. No perfection. But with Blake's show, it's the it's a set, and it's these songs, and transitions, and nailing it. Yeah. Well, that was that was our deal, and... We would only play probably 30 to 40 shows a year. And so the only way I was expressing myself musically was through Blake's gig, mm -hmm. which was great. Until we had all this time off and we weren't playing. And I was lucky enough to start playing with a guy, Zach Ray, starting in September. Mm -hmm. And he does a lot of 90s country stuff, which is why I moved to Nashville. Yeah. And I told myself, you talked about in May... Stutter Step, Shut Down, September. One of my goals in 2020 was to play more. Yeah. And then a pandemic hit. <laughs> and so I'm like, all right, so I guess I'm just going to practice at the house. I mean, that's great, but it's yeah. not the same. Uh, of course not. Yeah. And then September rolls around, and the phrase, a complete 360, people get that confused with a 180. I'm going full 360 because to play on Broadway – was something I did when I moved to town in 96. To survive. Yeah. Yes. My goal in September was to play downtown because I didn't know when we were going to play again. When are we yeah. going to tour? Who knows? And so I'm like, this is the gig, and I'm going to work for it. And you got to realize this, that Lower Broadway is a much different place than it was when you were in your 20s back in the oh, late goodness. 60s. Oh. Especially financially, too. <laughs> yeah. Holy sh yeah. For well, years, man, it was. it seemed like working on Broadway was drudgery mm -hmm. down to logistics. Um, you never know what drum kit you're going to have and yeah. what condition yep. said drum kit would be in. Um, trying to find a place to park. Yep. Back then, I think base pay could have been like 25 bucks, which base pay is what the club pays you. Yep. Yeah. But then you got to hustle tips. Yeah. The thing about it is, is that, um, I mean, I don't care. Some people are it's it's not their bag, but I get why you feel that way. I get why you were inspired by it because um even though there's the same a certain amount of songs that are played over and over again down there as well, you're you're way more free to even experiment just a little bit, even if it's something small. Mm -hmm. Um and it, this reminded me of Keo. They um it escapes me, I forget who it was. Um the other day I I played a drum shift down there and the next band up the I went off and we counted tips and chatted in the back. And when I was making my way back, I just grabbed my stuff. And the drummer after me set up his uh, his cymbals and everything at the same height that I did. And I asked him about it maybe 
you know, like the next time I saw him, he goes, oh, yeah, I do that with whoever's played before me. I play their setup. I was like, yeah, huh, interesting. Yeah. Which is why uh, you change your kit every year or every six weeks or every six <laughs> days, yeah. depending on your mood. To every keep it, day, just to keep it fresh, To man. keep it fresh. Yeah. yeah. I mean, like, and, I, and also, like, I also don't want to, like, rely on muscle memory. I know it sounds silly. Like, I want to, like... I want to be able to go around the kit and play whoever's kit. Like, uh, like the other day, I went down and saw uh, I went and saw Sarah play Sarah Weaver play, and John Root was playing drums, and she was like, "Come sit in." I was like, "Okay." John's left handed. I just played the drums. Yeah, challenge. I just sat down and played drums. I didn't. Yeah. I it wasn't like I was like, "Okay, well, my right foot goes on the bass." You know, I was yeah, like, yeah. I was like, "There are drums in front of me, and the challenge is to play them in time." And hopefully somewhat well, and hopefully also know the song, and then you know, yeah, that was it. And I mean, it was it was fun. And I I I started playing drums left handed, and I also started like when I was a kid, I would always go like to my dad's rehearsals, and I was playing his drummer's drums, and like another someone else's and someone else's. So I was always interested in that stuff. So it was always kind of fun, but it is a challenge. Which which is also like the fun part about playing downtown, where it's like you there is a different kit. Some things don't adjust quite the way they, well, especially in the old days. Like you know, especially remember the stage when they had those Donahoe drums, mm, mm. and and it was like a rack, and you couldn't move anything. You're yeah. like, yeah, this is weird. Or like you might be playing and the drums will fall apart. Of course. Uh, so I'm, mean, you know, it's just it, those things are one of the fun challenges of, and that, that will keep you inspired from playing. You know, or keep you inspired playing downtown is that you do you go you you go like go into a different office every day and you're like okay cool where's the printer yeah and where's you know so it's like oh the ride symbol oh it only goes so far but I really like it here but it only oh okay well I guess I'm doing this yeah. today and if you play it that way maybe not but maybe you discover something about yourself. Yeah, you know, true. Maybe you discovered something. You you catch on something. You hit on an idea, or maybe you you know a, a deficiency is totally. That's what is, I've discovered is, is fully realized. For me, I drop a stick on an upstroke because mm-hmm. mm-hmm. downstroke you're gripping. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So if a tom or a cymbal is a little bit closer and you're going, you're not fully gripping, or you shouldn't be. Yeah. You're loose. I mean, it could be anything that hits that stick and it's yeah. coming out. So I've had to pay attention. Oh, can't use muscle memory. Yeah. It's a different kit. And I found the mis- dropping the stick is when I think, oh, man, I got this. I'm killing it. And then you go for something like, oh, yeah, well, that's your wake-up call. <laughs> yeah. Focus again. Yeah. And those different kits down there, each one sounds a little different. Yep. Thank goodness they all sound really good. Yeah. True. There's people that take care of that stuff, yeah. whereas before there weren't. True. You have ear mixes. Most places have ear mixes. Even with that, the room sounds different. Room. Yep. Oh, my goodness. So my, in 96, version of playing downtown was, hey, I'm the drummer. Hey, I'm the guitar player. Hey, I'm the bass player. I'm the singer. Cool. Do you know this song? Yep. And you didn't know how much stuff you had to bring. Yeah. Then you slowly learn, okay, I need a snare, kick drum pedal, drum throne, I need my sticks. I bring my cymbals. Cymbal felts. Cymbal felts and hi hat clutches. Yeah. And multiple. Yeah. Yep. And so then you realize that's what I need to bring. Okay, cool. But the drums weren't that great. But now most of those kits sound really good. Yeah. You have a really nice ear mix. So you're saving your ears. Back then, you had a wedge. Oh. That man. sounded bad. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And also the people that are working behind the soundboards are better. True. Or there's people, there's somebody working there in general. Yeah. <laughs> oh, totally. Yeah, I mean, remember yeah. like they used to have like the 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 board was right next to yeah. the drums up here, and you and like, yeah. oh, how, how's this sound up front? You know, and you're like, yeah. Or they, and they didn't mic the drums. No. So you like just killing the kick drum, killing yourself yeah. for four yeah. hours, no break. Yep. Yeah, I does. I, I moved in 2000. I remember playing down there. I remember seeing you and. I saw Jim Riley. I saw uh, Trey Gray once. Yeah, I saw Rich, like mm-hmm. Pat McDonald. Yeah, Lee. I think all those dudes that were down there. I mean, I saw <laughs> I saw Jim Riley play, and I was like, "Wait, I got to play like that. I might as well move back. <laughs> I'm done." Because he was just killing it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you, I mean, kind of, I mean, you had to. I mean, those days, and and it was all also old only country. There was no right. rock. 
you weren't you couldn't play any rock music down there. You get fired. We got fired once. I was playing with Glenn Mitchell, and uh, we were there playing, and someone came in, and we were doing a uh, uh, like a super tramp song, and they were like, "You're fired." <laughs> that ain't country. like literally pack up. <laughs> wow. well, what's what's cool about <laughs> down there now? I was like, <laughs> They were like, well, the singer has to go. The band, you guys can go. We're going to find another singer. There's so much variety down there. Yeah. Yeah, no, it's, 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 it's everything. No. It, it's like Disneyland for country music fans because each dude has his own bar. Yeah. And all of those places have a certain thing they're looking for musically. Yeah. Yeah. So it used to be it was just country. Yeah. But now, man. You can hear, you walk out on Broadway, you're hearing rock, yeah. you're mm-hmm. hearing country, you're hearing everything, and it's cool, man, because Nashville is the bachelorette party capital of the world. Basically, Nashville is, if 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 Gatlinburg and Vegas had a child. <laughs> a redneck <laughs> it's child. That, it's, 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 that it's, is yeah, true. I know what you mean. It's like, it's Broadway. It's like slightly <laughs> ne- Neapolitan, but there's some hillbilly <laughs> that you're never going to get rid of. Yeah, it's yeah. like... They're like, oh man, that bill is thirty million dollars, and the only people going to it wear mullets, have mullets. Okay, cool, All right, sweet. Uh, <laughs> I remember <laughs> going downtown if we had to do something for Blake, and just being mad. Look at all these people. Why are they drive around in these buses and tractors and bachelorette parties? Is stupid. Yeah. yeah, bro. September rolled around. And I saw people having fun. Yeah, I know. Which I hadn't seen. Yeah. I'm like, I love it. My okay. whole vibe has changed. I love seeing people yeah. having fun again. Well, yeah, that, true. That brings me to this. Uh, beyond the club scene, in terms of being a drummer in town, when everybody's touring life resumes, Keo, yours already has. Mine's getting back started in six weeks. Uh, We're in limbo, but you guys are in limbo. Um, I used to think that people going out and seeing live music, that's n- never going to go out of style. And n- people on the weekends are always going to want to go yeah. and have fun I, until the end of time. Mm-hmm. And I never thought about just the fun straight up being taken away from you. And I wonder how long will it be? Or for some people, will they ever resume their life the same way it used to be? You know, it's like in business. People, they've realized that you know, you can uh, you can stay at home and sit on your couch and still do your job. Yeah, and be more, yeah. more productive. Yeah, yeah, possibly. So, yeah. I mean, you know, businesses are selling their uh, or getting rid of their office lease because they don't need it anymore. Which makes me wonder: some people in the entertainment field are they going to be? They, you know, some of these people that have survived the pandemic, they were already somewhat on the fence about being in a social situation, may never go to a movie theater again. Right. As long as they live. And you can survive. And will they ever return to the summer festival or the theater with a lot of people? Because, um, you know, the COVID has institutionalized everybody to that degree. Man, it was nuts. We played Friday night with Zach at the Wild Horse, and that was the day they lifted. The CDC came through oh, and yeah. said, hey, mm-hmm. dance floor packed, people having fun. I was like, we just had a blip. That's yeah. how I'm looking at the last 15, 16 months. It was a blip. But having played the Wild Horse before, no one was allowed on the dance floor. The only time they had people on the dance floor was for dance lessons. Mm-hmm. And they had the floor taped off. Said you had to stay in your square. Yeah. And so it was so weird but exciting to play and see a packed dance floor and people having fun. Yeah. And I, I, it just was good for my soul, man. So my whole perception of playing downtown, when I used to think it was such a pain to see all these people, what are they doing? Kids get off my lawn. I'm like, the people are having fun. And this is awesome. Yeah. And for me, playing wise, I look at every chance I get to play downtown as a chance to be better when I go back with Blake. It's a re- it's three to four hours yep. of honing my craft so that when yeah. I get back with him, I'm better than I was before. Yeah. So that's what yeah. I look at it, man. And I dude, to me, playing downtown was the last thing you wanted to do. 
Yeah. Because during that 15 year period where I didn't play, I had kids. I'm like, I'm not going to go down there for 25 bucks, yeah. try to find a place to park, play on a crappy drum set with people I don't know. Screw that. Yeah. But now, when you go in with people that you regularly play with mm-hmm. at a regular set of clubs that you know the what you get when you're getting in there, yeah. Man, this is paid practice for me. And I'm totally. playing with human beings. Yeah. And yeah. the whole goal when I do a gig is that when I get back with Blake, I'm a better drummer. Yeah. Yeah. That and the, the, the and the thing too is like you know, as much as we complain about those people and the tractors and the <laughs> and the hot tub one and all that, uh man, they come to support music. They do. They and they put money in that tip jar yeah. when you take home. Yeah, I mean they they come to support the scene. You know, like, you know, if there's no think about this, if there's no tourists coming in, those businesses go they go away mm-hmm. and that means there's nowhere to play. Right. You know, they become office buildings, they become condos, whatever, you know, like but with those people coming in, they're creating more jobs. There's more bars and more places to play in Nashville now than ever. Oh yeah, yeah. and yeah, and and it I remember at one point in time they were they couldn't even find enough bands. Like I don't know, like at at John's bar when John first opened, they were like struggling to find bands to play the that bar were, that were decent. That were decent. Yeah, I mean yeah. you know you can get any you know sure. to the point where like we end up playing there a lot. You know where you know it was like oh John's like hey guys. Uh, the six to ten band quit, uh, didn't show up today. I'm gonna go play. Come play with me, and I'm like, okay, cool, you know, whatever. And we, you know, we go down, and he, you know, and he, he would do Johnny Jukebox for four hours or eight hours, yeah, or twelve hours. But you know, so you know, but that, that's the cool thing about Nashville right now is that you know, especially with with the reopening, people are happy about it. They want to come out, and people recognize talent. You know, uh, not every band is amazing. Uh, but they're all good, right? And they can all hold an audience, and people recognize it. So they come back. They go, man, like, you know, we come back to Nashville because we love the bands. You know, like David Front's band also plays drums downtown, and you know, I brought my family to see Dave play downtown because it's good, it's entertaining, you know. And I and I love that stuff. You know, I, I'm downtown probably more than I should be. I also live like a half a mile from downtown and alone, so. You know, I'm like, man, I'm, I'm gonna get out and you know support my friends and go see some music, and I'll, I'll go do it. And you see people that come from everywhere, especially when you know when things were open, open. You know, the the amount of people coming from Europe to Nashville just to see, you know, country music, mm-hmm. just yeah. to you know, and then maybe even get a glimpse at seeing someone. I remember one time, uh, I was uh, hanging out, and this person hit me up on Facebook, and they said. I'm a really big Brad Paisley fan, and I love Ben Caesar. Is there any way I can meet him? Oh. And I was like, no. Exactly. So, ben does not like people. No. So I said, hey, Ben, you want to go downtown with me and meet some friends? <sighs> and he was like, yeah. And we did. And, this, and it literally made this person's trip. And, they're, and like, they were from Germany or something. And it made their trip like they were all got, they all got photos with them. They were like, "Oh my God, we just want we came to America to see country music and meet Ben Caesar." Wow, <laughs> wow, that's a sh- that's a good bucket. Yeah. Right? Oh. But I know offense, Ben. I mean, <laughs> but yeah, you know, I'm but it's, sure you're. I mean, I'm very sure you're, lovely to meet yeah, for the very I mean, first time. I don't remember when yeah. I yeah, met but you, you the know, first time. But it's but it's just funny that you know like that we you know. We have that attraction in Nashville where you know people are accessible and and people do they come to see they, see, they come to see the music they come to see you know players who play with those people they come to maybe see those people and so we ha- I mean that's that's a that's a fun thing about Nashville and the other fun thing about Nashville is that the community it, I always say it's a community and not a competition so like we all support each other yes um, we all help each other out you know when yeah. it, if a gig opens we all find out about it. And then we're like, man, you know, David would be great for this, or Trace would be good for this, or I'll be good for this. Screw those guys. Yeah, forget you know? those guys. <laughs> I'm good at all of them. You know, but you, but you all, but you know, you end up like putting your buddies in, drums, guitar, whatever. Like, there's a whole community thing that happens, and even like for the lower Broadway stuff, where it's like, oh man, like we need a drummer for this. Oh man, you know, call this guy because he knows these tunes, yeah. or call this guy, and you know, and mm-hmm. we're all, you know, everybody does that whole thing, and we support each other and. And and also things have gotten a little. At one point in time, I remember things being a little tense downtown, where like if you didn't know certain songs, people get like kind of pissy with you, 
And now it's just kind of, I think everybody's just happy to play now. Oh, so like, yeah. So, like, if you don't know, you know, because it's, you know, not everybody knows 800 songs, you know. Mm-hmm. Uh, and now I think that people are like a little more lenient with this. Like, oh man, sorry, I don't know this like B side Sammy Kershaw song. And then you play it and you go, man, you don't know it either, actually, but you just know the words. You know, <laughs> so, one of the things that I miss <laughs> so much was with playing on Broadway, you'll have your sets that you know, songs that you know, but then there the requests come in. Yeah. And I missed the element of how does this go? Yeah. Wait, it's got the okay, and and then it took me back to my brother, who is a sax player, he still has a band, and I would sit in, and he would, he would always tell me a to keep it simple, yeah, but to watch the rest of the band, the rest of the band is gonna tell you what's happening, yeah. yeah. Hopefully, one or two people know the song that you're about yeah. to do, yeah. and if they can cue you really exactly. well, exactly. Yeah. But what do drummers yeah. do? And that separates. There's the separation between good and great drummers isn't as hard as you think. No. A lot of it has to do with paying attention. That's it. Yeah. And the bad ones, you could be Dave Weckl incarnate on Broadway, but if you blow an ending and you're too into yourself and you didn't watch the band, that dude's not going to hire you again. No. Yeah. So when I'm playing down there, something I hadn't felt in 15 years, when you play a rare B-side like Black Hawk or something, yeah. and you kind of know it, but you pulled it off safe. Yeah. Yeah. That, oh, I was like, that's great. But then you're going to have your turds. Oh, you're yeah, like, yeah. Oh, yeah. Then you redeem yourself with a song, yeah, a totally. couple, three that you know. Yeah. That's what's so fun about experimenting that yeah. down there, though, is that I'm not afraid to fall on my face down there. Same. If I'm, if, even if it's a result of my mind wandering. You know, uh, and even if it does, it doesn't bother me. And even if I'm trying to work something out, you know, just like it, this, I mean, a minute thing, like a hi hat thing, yeah, that nobody else on stage would ever even know I'm thinking about. And you apply that to your touring gig later. Exactly. That is some payoff there. And you also, as you said, got paid to practice. Yeah. Exactly. Man, so what I would do when I'd get done, getting, it was rough in September. I was just happy to be there, as yeah. everybody was. But I found myself evaluating my performance. I'm like, man, I really need to brush up on that Keith Urban song. Yeah. So the time period from that gig to the next, I was in a YouTube rabbit hole, Pandora rabbit hole, Mm -hmm. searching out these songs, finding tempos for these songs. I'm priding myself on having a list of tempos. Yeah. Because we play to the grid on everything. (laughs) But I'm proud of you. Uh, But, like, (laughs) man, it's my goal because I realized. Over time, things have gotten out of alignment, yeah, playing yeah. wise. Yeah. No. Oh, yeah. No. I, I got sure. complacent. Well, sure. And so now every that's why I want every song as close as I can get, have a tempo, and I'm locking in. It could be Clint Black. Yeah. It could be anybody. George Jones. Yeah. It's a click, right? And we play to one, right? And that's our job, right? So I'll even like if I don't have it listed. I hear Zach or the guitar player, whoever's kind of fumbling through it. If I don't know the song, I'm taking, wait, that tempo is probably where he's comfortable, Yep. even though I don't know it. So I tap the tempo in, mm-hmm. and yeah. then I lock it in, and we play it. Yeah. Well, I do that. Like I, I mean, said, I don't like, necessarily. I'm glad you do well, that. I mean, um, I don't, I, I, I mean <laughs> my, biggest, that. my biggest thing is that I don't want, this sounds real lame, but I don't like playing drums for four hours. I don't like doing anything for four hours. I can't even sleep for four uh, hours. Yeah, I understand. Like, uh, I understand. stuff for I, four I, hours. <laughs> but yeah, I, 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 I typically, I, I couldn't, I, just for my own sanity, I couldn't play to a click for four hours down there. But one of the challenges and one of the things I love about playing downtown is, because I still don't, ha- I don't have a regular gig down there, you know, mm-hmm. uh, is I do enjoy meeting people and playing with them for the first time. I'll say yes to anything once. Yeah. Um. Uh, and typically, I'll keep saying yes unless it's just unless I just can't do it or I'm just not having fun. Uh, mm-hmm. There was a time where I just didn't have fun, so I didn't play down there for like maybe five, six years. Yeah, I just needed a break from it. Uh, but you know, I'm I can I'll still play down there. You know, when people call me and they're like, hey man, like I've called everybody, can you do it? And I go, oh, okay, sure. You know, and I go out and have fun. But I I do enjoy meeting people on the gig. Uh, I do enjoy the challenge of like remembering some random Blackhawk song or mm-hmm. 
you know, our Pirates of the Mississippi tune, which wow. I had to play. Nice. But, yeah, that yeah. Was, I like my women a he little on the side. <laughs> he was going deep. That's <laughs> wrong. You know that's wrong. <laughs> that's the wrong band. <laughs> Don't forget to like and subscribe to see more videos just like this.